studies of brain function involved exploring the effects of brain damage. When someone met some kind of misfortune, scientists would observe the changes in behavior or personality, and then from there form theories about different brain functions. This led to a phrenology, one of the first attempts to map cognitive functions onto brain structures. It involved feeling the skull and then attributing the bumps and valleys to mental faculties and character traits. While this particular technique has been discredited, the idea that we can map function onto structure has not. These days we use techniques such as observing slices of stained brain tissue under the microscope and single cell recordings to study animal models and the brains of people who are deceased. Non-invasive brain imaging techniques like MRIs and CT scans are used to identify structures of the brains, while PET scans and EEGs give us information about function. Some techniques, such as fMRI, give us information about both. A computed tomography, or CT scan, produces a 3D visual image of the brain constructed by using X-rays to detect differences in tissue density. High-density tissue absorbs more radiation than low-density tissue, allowing for the construction of a highly detailed image from X-rays taken from multiple angles. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, uses a strong magnetic field and radio waves to produce a detailed image of the brain or other body parts. It allows us to see inside the body without exposing people to radiation. We are mostly made of water, and when that water is exposed to strong magnetic fields, parts of those water molecules will align. The MRI machine then sends a radio frequency pulse that disrupts the alignment, and then gathers information about how long realignment takes. This is useful because different types of brain tissue will come back into alignment at different times. Positron Emission Tomography, or PET, maps brain activity by measuring blood flow to brain regions experiencing heightened neural activity. This lets us see what brain regions are active during different tasks because the brain regions with the highest activity are the regions important to completing those tasks. PET scans involve injecting an unstable form of oxygen, which has the half-life of 123 seconds, in the form of water into the bloodstream of a person engaged in a cognitive task. The PET scanner measures the positrons emitted as the isotope decays. Like MRI, fMRI, or functional magnetic resonance imaging, also uses a magnetic field in radio waves, but it can track changes over time to identify which areas of the brain are active during a specific task. Like the PET scans, this relies on the idea that local blood flow increases to areas of the brain that are active. PET and fMRI are both great, but expensive techniques. More approachable for many researchers are EEGs and ERPs. EEGs, or electroencephalograms, are a recording of the brain's electrical activity made by placing electrodes on the scalp. When large populations of neurons are active together, they produce electric potentials that are large enough to be recorded outside of the body. The pattern of these electrical activity differs depending on whether a person is awake, drowsy, relaxed, excited, or in various stages of sleep. For ERPs, or event-related potentials, EEG traces from a series of trials are averaged together by aligning the records in reference to an external event, like the onset of a signal or a response.